Thanks, David. And uh, is this on? It's uh, indeed a pleasure uh, to be able to uh, join uh, such a distinguished group of uh, scholars and uh, leaders on the stage uh, to really talk about what is happening in Ukraine and how the world needs to react. You know, I've been to Ukraine uh, seven times now since uh, the tor horrible instances on uh, the Maidan, uh, since the Heavenly Hundred, uh, were gunned down by their own government. Something that most of us would think of being unheard of in a democratic country. I was here with uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, John Baird. Uh, we actually met with uh, Alexander when he was uh, the acting uh, president. And uh, wanted to really make sure that Ukraine knew that Canada stood with the people of Ukraine. We also uh, came back uh, knowing that the needs of Ukraine are beyond uh, what we're seeing uh, from a military standpoint, that we have to stabilize the economy. So I came back with Minister Fast and go back to what Prime Minister Yatsenyuk said, that we need to have business boots on the ground. So we brought a, a group of uh, business people from Canada. We restarted uh, free trade talks want to make sure that uh, we kept as many doors open for investment in Ukraine and uh, to grow the economy here uh, during this difficult time. I've been on two uh, parliament, uh, the OSCE Parliamentary Assembly uh, election monitoring missions. Uh, I made sure I wanted to go to Russian-speaking areas of Ukraine, so I went to Kharkiv and Odessa. And I think it was really telling during the presidential elections is that even in, in Kharkiv, the people there wanted ch change, they didn't uh, trust the old style of government that they saw from Yan Yanukovych and before. And uh, they embraced the, the parliamentary elections and they ran very well. Uh, I've observed uh, a, a, quite a few elections here in, in Ukraine so, uh, over the years. And I can tell you that the elections that were held for both parliament and the presidential elections uh, were very well run. And I've been here twice delivering uh, military aid from Canada. And I can tell you, coming over on military aircraft uh, that far is, is an ordeal in itself. But it's nothing to really look at the ordeal that Ukraine is facing, especially in the east, in the Donbass. And I know that when we deliver uh, that military aid, especially the, the winter kit, that uh, 30,000 uh, winter clothing for the, the, the soldiers and got to the front line, that it was extremely well appreciated uh, during the cold winter. But... You know, you think back, who would have thought that a peaceful protest could oust a kleptocrat like Yanukovych and chase away that entire regime? To stand up uh, an army to take on one of the greatest military powers in the world and be able to hold them at bay or see the illegal annexation of Crimea by President Putin and his regime in the Kremlin. It is truly amazing how well the people of Ukraine have done in these incredibly difficult times. You know, why does Canada support Ukraine? Well, 1.2 million of us have Ukrainian heritage. I'm one of those 1.2 million. You know, we're family. We're friends. And I can tell you right across the board in Canada, Canadians love Ukraine. That's, that's a nice little, you know, gesture. Uh, but, so let me get but, into the facts. Well, I'm going to, yeah, okay, give us some facts, so, so, because I think that's, so what about I, the in, in my role as Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of National Defense, you know, we are always looking at what's happening. And yes, the world right now has turned their attention greatly to what's happening in Iraq and Syria. But we are still extremely concerned what's happening here in Ukraine. And so we have to make sure that the global security framework that is being threatened by Russia has to be stopped right here. Now, we're demanding that Putin withdraw all equipment, all his military might, and his personnel from Ukrainian territory. You know, Prime Minister Harper, you want to talk about world leaders. Well, Prime Minister Stephen Harper at the G20 in Australia, when President Putin walked into the meeting and he's glad handing and shaking hands and slapping backs, he walked up to Prime Minister Harper. 
And uh, Prime Minister said, and of course, it, well, part of this was reported. Prime Minister says, well, I guess I'll shake your hand, but I have only one thing to say to you. Get out of Ukraine. Putin's response was, well, we're not in Ukraine. And Prime Minister said, and that's the very reason why we have nothing to talk about. We can't be appeasing, as Alexander just said. We have to confront Putin and his regime head on. But this, this is very important stuff, and the language is, is critically important. I get that. But what we hear from Alexander is, we want more force. We want hardware help, not just, okay, you so, know, not just a so, morale so let, boosting let, chat. So, David, let's talk about the, the entire uh, gamut. So, from a military standpoint, Canada has provided uh, $27 million worth of military equipment. And uh, we're providing radar satellite imagery to the Ukrainian forces so they can see what's actually happening uh, in Donetsk and Luhansk and what's happening along the border. Uh, we are making sure that they have cold weather gear, body armor, uh, equipment to deal with uh, unexploded uh, explosive ordinances. And also, uh, now we're committing over 200 of our soldiers to be here along with the United States to train Ukrainian soldiers from both the armed forces and the National Guard. That training is going to be critical in making sure that the individuals who volunteered and never had a chance to actually go through basic training in the military now have that training even though they are battle-hardened. It's about making sure that, that units can function at a battalion level, uh, but also specializing in military police training, uh, uh, combat medical uh, first aid, uh, dealing with all these uh, other issues and putting actually Canadian boots on the ground in Ukraine to, to, to be there to help uh, Ukraine deal with all its problems. But we're also needing to stand up you know, more on the areas of humanitarian aid, on economic uh, reforms, and that's why we've done uh, over $600 million in investments here. Uh, from everything from training judges and, and uh, civil society, human rights act activists, making sure that you know, the show courts that we saw uh, affecting people like Yulia Temenchenko, that those show courts are done away with and that we actually have a true judicial system here that respects human rights, respects the individual, and, and works to a European norm. So that is, is, is critical as well. And, of course, we have to make sure that, that Putin is, and, and the Russian Federation aren't unilaterally redrawing borders around the world. So when you talk about intimidation, it's not just here in Ukraine. And as it was mentioned uh, by the NATO uh, Deputy Secretary General, that they are flying along all sorts of borders, including the Canadian border. We've got to remember that we share ocean space, the Arctic Ocean, with Russia. And they buzz Canadian space on a frequent basis. Um, but that's why we are also investing heavily in NATO through the uh, Operation Reassurance uh, and making sure that we have soldiers in Eastern Europe that have been on training in Germany, in Poland, Romania. Uh, we are part of the um, Air Task Force in Romania and Baltic Air Policing. And uh, now we have the Royal Canadian Navy as part of the NATO, NATO Maritime Task Force. Uh, right now in the Baltic Sea, but they were in, the, in, in, in the, the Black Sea on two different occasions already, where they got buzzed by Russian fighter jets. So, you know, this, again, is, is, is trying to counter Russia's aggression, Russia's intimidation, and Russia's attempt to change the world order. Okay, I'm going to...